All from. They're all three events, so. Oh! <laughs> okay. Hello, I am Bradley J, and we are backstage at Woodstock 99 with three, what look like very happy dudes, three kingpins. You got Ozzy Kilkenny, Michael Lang, John Cher. How's it going? You look all happy. Things must be going very well. Well, things are going very nicely. We're about uh, halfway through, and um, you know, so far so good. The music's been amazing. Right. Uh, kids are having a good time. Uh, biggest problem's been uh, a little bit of uh, uh, too warm temperature, but right. other than that, we're doing great. It seems so well organized that, and I talked to you out in the field, I snagged you for a moment and said, it seems almost as though you must have immediately started planning after 94. Maybe that's not true by your laugh, Ozzy. But it's so well put together that it seems that way. You started thinking, okay, we're going to do it again. We're going to do it better. How are, uh, what were some of the methods you used to plan? Did you go look at other festivals like Glastonbury and things like that? There is no festival like Woodstock in the world. Uh, I went to Glastonbury last year and it reminded us a little of the 94 event in that there was mud probably waist high in Glastonbury last year. But there is no other festival that does the kind of infrastructure that we do. And, and you know, we're very familiar with festivals in Europe. Ozzy's spent, you know, a good part of his life in the business right. and in Europe. And, and I've spent a lot of time in Europe as well. John refuses to go to Europe, but nonetheless, there, there is, there's nothing like this anywhere in the world, and it's because of the amount of infrastructure we put in place. So you needed the proper site for this infrastructure. Talk about the uh, selection process, things you needed to consider. Well, you know, you need, a, you need a footprint that's big enough, you need a place that's accessible, and most important, you need a community that's interested in having you. Right. And, and those are the essential elements. And in terms of, of the planning, I mean, we all learned a lot in 94. It may, it may seem like it's taken five years to, to figure this out, but really in figuring out 94, the three of us really put a lot of time in, in, in that, that event and have realized what we did right and what we did wrong. So what did you learn from 94? A couple of big ones. Well, we learned, we learned a lot of things. I mean, we, we learned that we needed to figure out a way to be able to secure the venue, not just from a commercial perspective, but uh, the people who pay to see this event mm -hmm. um, are entitled to get the goods and services that they paid for. Right. And uh, when it becomes a free concert and it's overrun by um, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people who didn't pay, it's, it's an unfair bargain, and we like to keep our bargain fair. So the concept of putting a Woodstock wall up uh, was born. It was born by uh, observing how some other people did different kinds of events and then uh, Michael came up with this wonderful idea to make it into not only a security wall but a great art wall. Mm -hmm. It's pretty amazing. So as, as the kids come and they, they look around and they see and they're ready to report back to their friends right. back home of whether this is a, a pretty place cool. they can get in or not. Yeah. yeah, they look in and there's a big smile on their face and right. say, this is cool. So the wall is not to keep people out but for the security of those within. Both. That's it's pretty both. good. Yep. It's both. All right. Yeah. All right. Um, other considerations that uh, made this a great site, besides the security aspect. Well, look, it was it was a uh, uh, a facility that the U.S. government, one would argue, arguably say the conservative aspect of the U.S. government spent a hundred million, one hundred and fifty million dollars uh, to build, and it, it's quite extraordinary on a lot of levels. But they abandoned it, and. Mm -hmm. uh, they let a quarter of a million young kids and uh, a couple of old uh, rock promoters take over it. Uh, but what they left was was uh, was a great facility with real buildings, with some real infrastructure, with real roads, uh, with a real sewer system. Close to the uh, highway. Close to the highway, lots of parking, and uh, uh, it made it practical to be able to try to do Woodstock again. What sort of rehab did you need to do? We, need, we had to do a lot of rehab. I just want to mention one thing about, about coming to this base. The Air Force has been incredibly cooperative, and the Air Force is still in possession of the base. They're, they're handing it over to the community. But I think it speaks to the fact that even the people who are in power in the Air Force th these days were the kids of our generation in the 60s. Right. So we have infiltrated society in a very real way, it seems, uh, to, to the point where they are now allowing this facility to be turned into something mm -hmm. of a music venue. So I think It is kind of a cool irony. It's kind I'm of sure very it's cool. has been pointed yeah. out to you. Yeah. How about pleasant surprises about this particular show? things you might have uh, not expected to go as well as they did. Well, I think that, you know, the weather turned out to, to, yeah. to work very much in our favor. We moved to July 
from the traditional anniversary in August because we were trying to avoid the big storms, big mm -hmm. storms. And maybe we got, you know, maybe the weather's a little too good. It's a little too hot out there, but but we'd rather have that than, than right. a lot of rain and mud. Or at least Ozzy and I would. Yeah, at least they would. <laughs> <laughs> Michael doesn't believe it's really Woodstock unless it rains, yeah. but we have. It may we're, rain. Yet. We're going to help him. We're going to help him. <laughs> praying for we rain. We have something planned for rain. We're getting it. <laughs> Take him on a dirt box and give him some some uh, water. Uh, how do you decide? How many dumpsters, porta potties, and stuff to order? Because it's a crapshoot. You don't have anything to go by. You have to sort of guess. You, you plan. You plan for numbers. You plan for all the resources and facilities around that. Then you have the experience of doing it once before. And okay. You have to, but you it's have based to, on the number. How you, do you, you pick a number. calculate you, the number? You pick a number and you look at this, the, the site services that are here and you, you do a lot of detailed planning. And even that can go awry. You, know, it, it, you, you use your best efforts to, make, to get, get everything statistically correct from the last time, which we've done. And it's been a great success. Everything out there has come through to expectations. And you get a great musical event out. And what's, ha what, what's most important for everybody here, everyone's enjoying it. You, get, you don't see anybody out there saying there's anything negative about right. this event. There's it's no event. It's overriding problem. Event. I can tell you how we figured it out the first time. Okay. <laughs> I send people out to bus stations and train stations and public arenas and time people going to the bathroom and multiplied it by the number of people we thought were going to come. Really? Yeah. You never told us that much. <laughs> we, we were never you have to have secret. Secret. Very That's scientific. not a secret you should ever share with us at this moment. <laughs> when you look at the kids out there, how do they seem compared to the kids in 69? They look like kids. Same, same damn thing? They look like kids. You know, if you look at the 94, Barbara Koppel shot an amazing movie, the 94 event. Mm -hmm. And if you look at, at that movie, and we've used some footage from the 69 event in that movie, the only way you can tell the crowds, <laughs> the, the difference in the crowds, some of the hairstyles were not really that much, but mostly it's the tents. Really? Yeah. But it's seamless. They didn't it's have quite, no space. It's quite seamless in places, isn't it? Yeah. Very much so. Yeah. Any uh, events, sort of surprises, planned for the next day or so? Yes, we have, we have a few things that, that we think is will be surprises. Is it a secret? And we, yeah, well, we'll, we have a finale <laughs> planned that, that I think is going to be quite spectacular. A finale? Yeah. Okay. You dropped the prices a little bit uh, after day one, as I understand it. I yes. guess that's correct. What about a price drop for the final day? Well, it was really proportionately we dropped it. <clears throat> In other words, we made a two-day ticket available. We'll be making a one-day ticket I available uh, for seventy dollars, mostly for the people locally who, who uh, right. you know, wanted to come in and get a little taste of it. Mm -hmm. um, because things went so smoothly, we didn't pre-announce it. We didn't know they'd go this smoothly. Um, but because things have gone this smoothly, it's been this positive. This amazing cooperation from the state police, from the county, from the town. Um, the governor. Excuse me. The governor. Right. Um, you know, uh, we we, we uh, you know we looked and said, listen, let's let everybody come who uh, who, who wants to come. Right. So uh, really, that's why we've done it. Cool. What are you guys going to do to celebrate when this is all over, and you can relax? Well, it depends on when you think it's going to be all over. Uh, the music will stop sometime tomorrow night, but uh, we certainly have uh, weeks and months of work to do. There's going to be an album coming out uh, in September on Epic. There's going to be a home video. Are going to come out. There's going to be um, maybe this can be on the video. Uh, maybe this can be on the video. Uh, there's some uh, uh, there'll be some specials uh, coming out down the road. Uh, there'll be a lot of ancillary product uh, uh, coming out. We'll be working on that, and uh, we'll. Uh, we're going to be working on this for a while, What's going too. On? It's yeah. going to take six or eight weeks to get there's this a, taken a, apart. There's a wind-down circumstance yeah. you've got to deal with here. Okay. Congratulations, gentlemen, on a job well done so far. Uh, so At far. Woodstock. What's the so far? <laughs> At Woodstock with the Woodstock organizers. I'm Bradley J. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you, Bradley. Thank you. Thank you, Bradley J. You're very welcome. Who's got a baby wife? <laughs>